Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Vail Customs. So today I'm sharing with you a work in progress series of installing a sword letter opener into this Conan versus Medusa statue I'm working on. Now, this is the sword he came with. Beautiful looking sculpt, but the problem is uh, this sword, you know, to paint it up to make it look like metal, it can be done, but it takes a lot of work. And then because it is a uh, resin, it could be easily snapped in the process. Uh, so the client who uh, sent me the statue, we got to talking and he had uh, one of these letter openers of a Conan sword and it is a beautiful looking letter opener and it's going to work out great. Uh, from what I understand, these are the more expensive letter openers because it's bigger and uh, they do have smaller ones which are like $30 but they're only like this big whereas this one's like almost like 10 inches I would say or 9 and uh, this is going to work out great. Uh, we were a little bit worried in the beginning if this was going to be in scale. And once I got the sword and I put it around his hands, like, this sword is unbelievably long, right? Whereas this one looks like it's almost in a perfect scale, because if you were to put it at his hip and he was holding it, the sword wouldn't be hitting the ground. And I think this is a perfect scale for this statue, whereas this sucker, if this is on his hip, I mean, this is like touching all, this is going below the base, almost, in a way. Whereas, you know, this one kind of seems to be in perfect scale. So... The idea is uh, Conan's going to be holding this sword like this in this direction. Uh, now we have a little bit of a problem though. Uh, it's, it's not that uh, major, but I'm going to be trying to figure this out as I go. So you see this is the hand, and this hand has this little tiny nub as a key, which I don't know why. Whereas this hand has like a thicker key. So if anything, this key should have kind of been like on this hand. I don't understand why, but I'm going to have to work this out. So this hand goes like this. Uh, this hand doesn't actually fit in here because I have to work out the key a little bit. So this hand kind of goes like that. So as you can kind of see, I will put up the camera a little bit more. Sorry about that. And uh, so it goes like this. So he holds that sword handle with this hand in a way like this, sort of. So the, we have a couple problems with that because if, what I, my idea was I'm going to cut this handle to like right about here. So this way, this handle goes into this hand and it stays. We're keeping this handle because the idea is I'm going to shave this down and we're going to use leather wrap around this hand. And then uh, what I might try to do is I'm going to see if I can salvage the tip of this and put it on this handle. But I don't think I'll be able to. I'm not really sure. It's very, it's a little bit tricky and working with metal, like this type of metal is very hard because I don't have metal tools and to kind of saw this stuff up and then use like the... The Dremel tools and stuff, the stuff gets so hot, I'm not really a good metal worker. So the main goal is we want this part. We want this part onto this statue. If we can salvage this part onto this tip, I can. But the other thing is, I am not sure if this uh, tip of this handle will actually fit in here with that hand. So it's a little tricky. So the other problem I'm coming up with is once I get this handle in this hand, I don't have a lot of meat to Dremel in here to get onto here. Because you have to really have this hand secured on here, otherwise if you just kind of glue it in, it's going to fall out. You really have to make a nice key. So I'm thinking now, after I've kind of been looking at this and talking about it, what I'm probably going to do is, my idea first was to get everything installed, have it on here, and then mask the statue up and then paint it. But what I think I'm going to do is, I'm going to get this handle and this sword onto here. I'm going to make some kind of a peg for this. And I'm going to have this to the point where this kind of goes in and out. I can't do a magnet because with these two uh, hands like this, there's no way you could do magnets in and out. It's just not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I want to make a peg where at the end it's going to be a strong peg where I can actually glue this in. I'll use one of my metal pegs so I could dab some glue and then I could glue this in. And this way it'll be a nice long peg in his arm going this way in the hand. So it's not going to be like a small peg. It's going to be like a long peg type thing. I'll have to figure that out. So this way, at the end, I could kind of dab some glue, and I could dab some glue here, and then I could glue these hands in, and then I could seam it up with some aves, and I could touch it up with paint. I think that's kind of like the best part. Because what I want to do is, the idea is, he is uh, pegged like this. So it'll be like a peg like that. So this I made him removable. So this way, when the hands are in and he's in, I can focus on Medusa, I can focus on him. And then at the end, for shipping and moving and packing, it all comes apart. So that's, uh, that's where I'm at right now. So I'm going to go in the garage today, and I'm going to drum out this uh, 
this piece uh, here with this hand. I'm going to drill a hole through here. I'm going to work out this key a little bit more for this hand. This hand I don't have to worry about. This hand can actually just be glued because this hand's not going to be holding anything. It's just kind of a placement. So this hand is not the main concern. This one is. So I'm going to go do my Dremel work. Uh, once I kind of figure everything out and I get this kind of going in here and everything's working good, uh, we're going to probably try to saw off this handle, maybe see if I can shave this down without screwing anything up just to give it a little bit more, uh, just not make it as thick to try to get into the hand, and then I'll see if I can salvage this too. So I think I'm going to cut it off uh, probably here first, right there, and then uh, I'll shave off a little bit more down to here. And then I'll uh, just keep plugging away on this. But yeah, this is a beautiful looking uh, letter opener. And I think this is going to work out great for the statue. So uh, we'll be back once I kind of plug away and I get some more stuff. And I kind of think about it a little bit deeper. Alright, so I uh, went into the garage and I drummed out the hand. Uh, so looking at this hand, I realized there's not enough meat up in here. And there's not enough meat where this little nub piece goes. So what I did is I drummed out this hole here. And then I jumbled out the piece here. So if you actually look in there, when I put this piece of metal in there, you can see. So there's a holes going throughout the thing. Now, my idea was I was going to take this piece of metal, which is key stock. It's just a square rod. It's made for like your door handles to your house. It's called key stock. This is what's in the center of those handles when you turn. Uh, so I cut up a piece. I'm going to put it in this part of the hand. So this way when the hand goes in, it goes like this. Now, I cut a piece of hollow uh, brass and uh, this slides in and out. But the only problem I know in the past is if you put dabs of glue in here and you try to slide this in, it creates such a suction that it actually doesn't let it go all the way in. And sometimes you get stuck. So I might not use this uh, brass rod. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Aves. I'm going to get this piece set up like this. And I think what I might do is once the Aves is set up and everything, I'll put some Aves in this hand. Uh, like the next day and I'll work out a square piece with this and then what I'll do is uh, I'll get my Dremel tool or my hacksaw and I'll cut notches in here so this way when I'm ready to or actually I might not even do that what I might do is just put some notches in here and then when I'm ready to attach this hand to here I'll just put Magiscope and A's with some glue and then I'll put this in here like that and it'll just be secured and this will be like a nice uh, good piece. Like when I say notches, hopefully you can see it on the thing. You see those little notches I kind of hacksawed in? That just helps it grab a little bit more. So I might do that as well. Uh, actually, I might go in the garage and do that now. So this way, once this piece is set up and then I, you know, put some magic sculpt in there and I kind of touch it up and I hit it with paint, this piece will be secured onto this statue really well. So I think that's my best bet. Um, the other, this, the other way with this working like this is more of like a magnetized type thing. This won't work uh, unless it's got something where it pushes the glue out. Otherwise it gets stuck and you don't get it all the way through. So yeah, I'm going to go in the garage. I'm going to hit this back with some more uh, notches. So this way once this is all set up, it'll go in and I think that's my best bet. So like I'm um, kind of doing this with you guys as I progress. So they're like because there's two hands hitting it, I'm trying to think. If it was just one hand holding it... It would be easier just to put it in the hand, make it magnetized and whatever, and I'm done. But now there's two, so i got to kind of work around that. So yeah, I'm going to go in the garage, I'll knock this out, and then we'll do a fast video of me just filling this up with Aves and getting that set up. Alright, so at this point, uh, we got this piece of metal in there. It's looking pretty good. Uh, so when I got some magic sculpt here, and I'm going to start working out like, not like key per se of going in and out, just a key that I'll be able to glue in at the end. Now, uh, this stuff is going to grab this pretty well, so I got to kind of toy with it, just kind of put it in. And make sure we're kind of lined up. Now it's going to grab some of that on there. It's going to get a little bit messy, as you can see in those. But that's all right. Uh, we need to throw a little bit more. Now this key doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a matter of working to the point where... I'll be able to throw glue in at the end, or even some more magic sculpt. 
so I could kind of make it a little bit wider. So we got kind of like a, a key there, as you could kind of see. And this is pretty much needs to be wiped down. All right, so that's pretty much where I'm at. Uh, what I'll probably do is I'll probably hit, hit this with some baby powder. Eh, maybe I don't need to. Making sure everything's... Yeah, so we're looking pretty good there. All right, so I'm going to clean this up, let this sit, and i got to start planning out how I'm going to cut the sword. But for right now, we're looking pretty good. All right, so I'm in the garage. I'm going to cut this uh, piece now. Uh, I did a little bit of a mark right here. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not too well. I did a little bit of a mark right there, so that's where I'm going to cut it. And uh, that piece is going to go as far into the hand as I could possibly get it. But I want a little bit of a showing here because I don't want the hand touching this piece too much. So this way, this leaves me some meat on here to attach it to the top over there somehow. So I'll have to kind of grind this down. But uh, with something like this, uh, because the handle is going to be kind of hidden, I can actually put it in the vise. Now we don't want to put it in the vise like this even though that's the best idea. We don't want to put it in the vise like that because we're going to ruin the sword. So we got to kind of do it at an angle. So I'm going to put it in the vise this way. Not going to crush it too much, but that's okay. Some of that's getting crushed. And then we're going to kind of go at an angle like type thing like this, as you can kind of see. So I'm going to kind of saw it this way. It doesn't matter if this piece falls off, uh, you know, from the back. We just want to make sure that this piece doesn't get banged up and nicked. All right, so I uh, cut the piece and we're looking pretty good. Uh, the only problem now I'm going to run into is I don't have a metal grinder. Now, uh, I do know uh, my parents' house, my father has a metal grinder, which if I ever go up north, I could probably use his. Or uh, maybe if uh, I could contact Warren Rosie, he does a lot of metal work. Uh, you could check out his channel, uh, Kinetic Cap, on YouTube. He does a lot of customs as well. Uh, he lives by close to me, and it's always good to know people in the hobby that you know maybe somebody's good at metal work, somebody's good at casting, somebody's good at sculpting, painting. You know, so if you not know a lot of people in the hobby, you can always talk and maybe borrow tools if you live close by. So I know uh, he has a grinder. Uh, the, my goal would be now is. I want to grind the handle down. So as you can see, that's a really thick piece of metal there. So it's not just something I could use sandpaper. Um, you know, I have this uh, sander here, and I could do this, but this is uh, not really going to grind metal too well. Uh, that that sandpaper will pretty much uh, go to crap probably in just one, uh, just trying to do one side. Uh, I need an actual like metal grinder. Um, so what I would want to do is I would want to grind this piece down a little bit. This to like kind of like a point or kind of a thinner piece so I could kind of work something here with that and then uh, I need to grind this down so this goes into here and then I can wrap uh, you know that uh, what was it um, leather strap around it so that's where I'm at right now uh, so I got to kind of grind this down so while I'm kind of finding a way where uh, finding out what day I could kind of grind this stuff down I'll have to uh, work on the Medusa and get a lot of the other parts done but yeah, once I get this grinded down and get this into the hand, we're pretty much ready to go with uh, finishing up the statue because I can uh, have this uh, nice solid sword with this piece up here like that. And then we have a nice cool looking uh, sword. And then I could just kind of touch up the hand and then glue this in and then seam it up and then pretty much done. So uh, that's my next step. Uh, once I figure that out, we'll be back. Okay guys, so uh, I talked to Warren and he says my belt sander it was my best option because he says uh, metal grinding wheels will probably kick the item back into me and it would take off a lot of chunks and then uh, those chunks might kick back and scrape up the piece. So what I did was on my belt sander I took off the old belt and I put on a new 80 grit belt, a uh, brand fresh new one and then what I did is I wrapped this around with a nice good towel and then uh, what I did is I spun it around the piece and I kept sanding it down so you can kind of see how much I took off. I guess you can see how much it took off there. So it's got enough now where it goes in and out of the hand perfect. So we're at, we're at a good spot now. The only problem is uh, when I was putting it in and out, I was like, wait a second, how is this going to stay? So what I did is I started notching it at the tip. So this way I'm going to put some magnets because I got to drum out this a little bit more to give it a little bit more of a 
angle going this way and an angle going that way. So this way when I put a magic skull, it's not a perfect tube coming out. So it's got to kind of work. Um, plus I also have to line it up because if you kind of look there, it's kind of at an angle. You gotta, I got to kind of like line it up correctly when he's on the statue. So I got to kind of toy with that. So that's our next step is toying with this getting it in there. Uh, this is still fairly, uh, well it's cooled down a little bit, but it was hot as hell before. You can see I pretty much uh, belt sanded this down a lot. I messed up and I hit some pieces here and there, but I'm going to kind of toy with that a little bit. I'll probably uh, add a little blood to kind of take it away or something because I'm not really good with metal work and I'm doing my best I can with this, but learning as I go. So I'm going to be uh, sewing this part off or just kind of grinding it down. I'm going to dremel a hole and then this piece will go in there like that. So now we'll have this at the end. But what I also have to do is I have to sand all this down and get this nice and smooth so I can wrap the leather strap around here. So at this point, I'm going to keep working on the hand, get this all organized, ready to put this on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to line up the sword for the hand on Conan, make sure everything's perfectly aligned with the the you know this piece is going lined in and it's lined up with this and it's going off of him pretty good and uh, I got to make sure I get this turned correctly because we you know I think a uh, client wanted at a specific angle so it's like you know we can have it like this or you could turn it like that you know or it's like this so we kind of want it like how it was so I got to kind of toy with that and see what he wants and then uh, once we pretty much have it all set up, it's just a matter of painting up Conan and Medusa and then wrapping the strap and stuff like that. So uh, I'm not sure at this point where we're going to end this video because uh, I got a lot of work to do on the statue before it's even finished. But at least maybe uh, I can have Conan painted up or something with the sword in and then I can worry about Medusa afterwards. I don't know. We'll see how things go. But uh, yes, yeah, so that's where we're at now. So, so far it's going to be really cool looking. And I really like the idea of using these letter openers for statues now because it just brings it to a whole new level. So uh, I'm going to get this all set up and once this is set up we'll come back. Alright, so uh, I got this drummled out a little bit more with the part up here. So now this piece uh, goes in here no problem now. So I'll have to work out that at the end. But right now I'm going to work on the sword. Now. Uh, I, there's a little uh, Conan etching type thing here, so we're going to show that in the middle. So I threw some magic sculpt in the hand, and this is the way this hand goes on here. So, as you can see with the sword, we don't want the sword going like this, because if he's coming over his head, we don't want the sword kind of flopping on her like that. We want the sword cutting, so we're going to keep the sword lined up correctly like that. And the only problem is, is the reason why I'm using magic sculpt at this point is... Uh, I, I, I like the idea of the Magiscope really hardening and holding it. Uh, I do have that, uh, this stuff here, which is a BSI uh, epoxy, you can mix A and B together. I know this stuff is strong, but I don't like this stuff too much only because, in a sense, that could kind of like, you know, warp over time maybe because it's not as hard as a rock. So I'm going to push this uh, magic sculpt in here, and you can kind of see it kind of comes out of that little hole there. That's okay because I'm going to push it back in. it would have been very hard to try to get that in there so now I can smush it in this way now what I did do is I tried to line up the sword a lot too uh, like you know how I when I place it in where it would sit and go so this is something I might have to look at over you know the course of the next two three hours just keep checking it to make sure it's sitting in correctly but, I mean we're looking pretty good so uh, we're looking pretty lined up, you know, as we can see with the handle. You know, I'm looking at it going in this direction here, making sure it's lined up. I'm looking over here. I'm looking over here, and it's looking pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to support the sword and keep it like this for a little while because I don't want to lean it on here in this kind of turn. So, but we are looking pretty good. So this way, when it does go in here... Come to show you now, I can always just kind of fix it. It's going to be lined up like that, as you can see. Just kind of let a little bit of an angle, but that's alright. So we just got to make sure we're lined up correctly again. So the Aves is really going to make sure it is secured. Well, I'm sorry, not Aves Magic Sculpt. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in some more Magic Sculpt going this way because I wouldn't mind it kind of pushing out over near the hand. So that's pretty much where I'm at at the moment. Uh, just gonna kind of toy with this for the next hour or so. Make sure that once this uh, magic sculpt starts hardening, we're at a good spot. 
And then uh, once that's all said and done, we'll come back, we'll do the finishing touches. And then like I said, I don't know if I'll uh, post this video beforehand or after I paint it up. But maybe we'll do it before, and just to give you guys an idea of what's going on. So this way you can look forward to seeing when it's all done. But just turning it like this, but I'm looking at it, you know, from my direction. We're looking pretty good. Yeah, so okay, so we're looking good. So I'm going to prop this up somewhere like this, make sure nothing happened. Like I might just like cut a hole in like a cardboard box or something and just let it sit in there like that. And then we're looking pretty good. So uh, I'm going to just try to make sure... If I need to put any uh, eaves or magic sculpt in there, probably swish more here and just run with it. But I think we're looking good. So once this is all cured up and stuff, we'll come back and we'll set up the next part. All right, guys. So it's the next day and we're looking pretty good. So you can pretty much see the way the sword is looking on him. It's going to be awesome once this is painted up. It's going to really pop, especially if we add a little bit of blood splatter and all that stuff. So, but we're running into a couple issues. And of course, this is uh, what takes all this time just to kind of get this stuff working out. So I'm going to take this handle down a little bit more because this is up a little too high. But these hands are really big though, so I'm kind of working off the hands, but we got no choice. But I'm going to take this down just a little bit because you figure if this was completely flush up here and then this was over here, it would be kind of up higher. But we're going to take this down just a little bit to there. Now, one of the things though I'm running into a problem with is this hand's not flush against here because this handle's hitting this hand. It's just not lining up correctly. Uh, and I kind of had that problem even before I added this sword. This, these things weren't lining up too good. So what I have to do is I'm going to take this uh, item down and I'm going to sand this down even more. I'm going to sand all this down a little bit more because when I wrap the rope around, the, the leather strap around it like this, you know, it's going to be hitting the hand. As you can see, it'll be hitting that hand. So I got to kind of take down the hand a little bit. I got to fudge the hand a little bit. There's no choice. So you can kind of see the way the hand is like that. What I got to do is sand this down a little bit more. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, so if things actually work out well, and I don't need to do any more, I'll run with it and leave the resin. But if for some odd reason that I'm sanding it down and the resin is a problem, I have these hollow uh, tubes. This one's a little bit bigger. And then I got this other one over here. So what I could do is I could just take this whole piece out, just take that whole piece out, and add a line uh, like this up, and then uh, I can put the piece in here. This one's a little bit bigger, where this will fit in here, as you can see, because they're hollow. The other one's a little bit too small. So, I mean, that's it's kind of like building a skeleton, and then I can wrap this stuff around here like this, you know, wrap it all around and everything. Uh, but the only problem is I got to see how far I could go with it. So I don't know yet. I'm going to go in the garage. I'm going to sand this piece down. And uh, then I'm going to toy around with the hand. If I feel that everything's working out pretty well, I'll just leave this as is. If I feel that I need to drum it out, I will. But uh, yeah, I will do that in the garage today. We'll come back and I'll show you guys what's going on with it. But so far, so good. All right, guys. So we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, hands all done. I uh, painted some silverish paint around the handle. I put this little piece here just for now just to cover this up so it didn't uh, get primer or paint or anything. Uh, so uh, this handle right here for the sword that goes on the side this is going to be a little bit different but similar. What I'm doing is I'm going to wrap the rope around it but I can keep, I could come down with the rope again to give a little bit of a thickness like that. I can't do it with this handle because this handle has the other hand coming in it so it's not going to work. But uh, it just gives you an idea. So uh, make sure you cut yourself a nice long piece of rope. You don't want to be wrapping it around and all of a sudden you ran out of rope. And then you, you got to try to match it because you already started gluing down. So it's always best to have a nice long piece of rope. i got to cut another piece because I dropped this in the water on my table. So I need a drier piece. But uh, I like to use the BSI gel glue because the gel doesn't actually fall down like the liquid form. This stuff is still good. But the problem is, is this is a liquid. So with the gel... I can actually squeeze out a little bit at the tip, use my little tools here, and put dabs of glue and wrap around, dabs of glue and wrap it around, and it'll stay on pretty well, and it dries very fast. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Uh, so you just see a fast video of that, and then uh, we'll just come and show you what it looks like on the statue. But uh, we're pretty much almost close to finishing up the statue anyway, so uh, we'll probably show a final video once everything's all said and done. But I just wanted to show you guys how you can get this... Uh, letter opener on a handle and you know just working for your statue so uh let's get this rope on
All right, and uh, that's pretty much the sword setup. So all I have to do is a couple of tweaks here and there. Uh, I got to finish up the statue. And then uh, once I add a lot of blood splatter and blood to the sword, and I get a couple blood splatters up in here, you know, it'll really come together. But just wanted to focus on, you know, pretty much how you can get a letter opener onto your statue. So I think it's going to look out really cool once he's all done. So uh, that's pretty much that part of the video. Uh, once the statue's all finished up, we'll come back with a final video. And you can guys see how it looks all uh, finished up. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back with some more videos.